Hector Hugh Monroe, uh, better known by the pen name Saki and also frequently as H.N. Monroe, was a British writer whose witty mich- mischievous and sometimes macabre stories satirize Edwardian society and culture. He is considered a master of the short story and often compared to O. Henry and Dorothy Parker. Influenced by Oscar Wilde, Lewis Carroll, and Rudyard Kipling, Kipling, he himself influenced E. Mild Noel Coward and P. G. Woodhouse. Besides his short story, which were first published in newspaper, as was customary at the time, and then collected into several volumes, he wrote a full-length play, The Watch Pot, in collaboration with Charles Maud to one act plays, a historical study, The Rise of the Russian Empire, the only book published under his own name, a short novel, and what we are about to to talk, The Lumber Room. Hector Hugo Monroe uh, was born on December 18, 1870 at Ekbag, British Burma and died on uh, Died in November 14, 1960, at the age of 45 years old. Published in 1914 as part of the short story collection titled Beast and Super Beast, Munro Saki's story exemplified his cynical delight in juxtaposing the societal convention of the Edwardian period in England with what has been called the demoniac side of childhood. As the story opens, Nicola found himself suffering the punitive measures of a self-appointed and authoritarian aunt. He is denied the supposed privilege of going to the sons of Jack Burrow because he refused to eat his bread and milk in a bowl which contains a frog. Scold for speaking nonsense as there could not be a frog in his dish, Nicola insists that there is indeed a frog since he has put it there himself. Then Nicola is called further for his audacity in taking a frog from the garden. However, he perceives only the older person's misjudgment in arguing that there could be no such creature in his bread and milk. Deprived of the supposedly festive privilege of the beach, Nicholas informs his aunt that his cousin Bobby will not enjoy himself since his boots are too tight and his other cousin has crept her knee. She scolds him for not informing her of Bobby Boots and issues an order. You are not to go into the gooseberry garden. But since she is convicted that he will do so, Nicholas maneuvers his way toward one of the garden doors, knowing that the aunt is watching. He then doubles back and goes into the library, where he takes down the key to the lumber room. Once inside the lumber room, light only by a high window, Nicholas meets with a world that stirs his imagination. A piece of frame tapestry becomes a living story of a hunter with a stand. He has shot with an arrow. Being pursued by several wolves, a teapot is delightful, a book of bird resplendent, and a carved scandal wood box lovely. Suddenly, Nicholas heard his haunt, shrill voice calling him in the gooseberry garden. He smiled to himself. Soon the hungry cries gave way to a shriek and a cry for help, looking the number room, the number room. Nicholas entered the front garden, calling out his aunt. She responded, informing him 
that she has fallen into the empty the empty rainwater tank and she asked Nicola to fetch to fetch the small ladder under the cherry tree. Nicholas quickly replies, I was told I wasn't to go into the gooseberry garden. The aunt countermand, don't talk nonsense, go and fetch the ladder, the ladder. Still Nicholas object, saying her voice does not sound like his aunt. Vehemently, the, the voice from the tanks order the ladder when Nicola asks if there will be a strawberry jam for tea and the aunt assure him that there will be. Nicholas argued that the voice cannot be his aunt who thought yesterday there was no jam. Nicholas walk away but a kitchen maid eventually see the aunt's plight and rescue her. At tea time that evening, there is a threatening silence. The children return, return from Jaburu, disgruntled that the tide was too high to have enjoyed the sand. The sand. Bobby is yet in a bad temper, and the aunt sit in frozen muteness, also silent. Nick imagines that the huntsman on the tapestry will escape with his dog while the wolf devour the deer. Nicholas is a very smart young man who has planned out this day very carefully. He's dying to get into the lumber room. There is nothing worse than being told you cannot go into a room. He knows his hunt well and he knows if he puts the frog in his bread and milk in the morning, she will arrange for the other kids to go someplace fun. Then, then he will have the house to himself. He's a planner. He's a planner. He knows where the key is hidden, knows how he's going to eat down from the shelf and knows how to open the door since he practiced on the schoolroom door. When he opens that door, he has a wonderful experience because he's very imaginative. While looking at the tapestry, he creates a whole scenario of what is happening in the picture. Quote, but did the huntsman see what Nicholas saw? That four galloping wolves were coming in this direction through the wood. Would the man and his dog be able to cope with the four wolves if they made an attack? Later we see that he's a quick thinker. When the hunt became trapped in the rainwater tank, she calls to him for help. She promised to give him strawberry jam for tea, although she has no intention of doing so. Nicholas knows that. Nicholas said that he thinks she's the evil one tempting him to disobey. He will not give in to the temptation. He uses the subject of strawberry jam to convince her that she must be the evil one. So he leaves her there in the rainwater tank until the kitch, kitchen maid rescues her. He has a sense of humor. The reader himself found himself smiling at Nicholas' ingenuity. Ingenuity. He has a spirit sense of fun, which I don't think the aunt appreciated. The aunt is a killjoy, a spoiled sport. We are not told this directly, but can infer it from her of habit of devising treats for the children for the sole purpose of excluding one, one or all of them as a punish, punishment. She presumably does this in order 
better to assert her authority from a child a child's point of view she she's an infuriating grown-up she often doesn't listen when the children tell her things and change the subject when challenged we are told that she's a woman of few ideas with immense power of concentration a description with nail uh, we, which nails her as obsessive and small-minded nicholas is self-willed stupid and equally obsessive about getting into the lumber room and about thwarting the aunt but he's a small boy the aunt the aunt obsession with at at writing nicholas is revealed as actually very childish nicholas is the the the, the hero of this sub subtly subversive story subversive story from the point of view of the narrative she is the foil against which nicholas character emerges a boy of many ideas imagination and quick wit we applaud rather than condemn nicholas disobedience and his triumph in this war of wills mostly because the aunt's behavior is revealed as absurd and she is appeared to deserve her punishment so let's go to the plot analysis first of all with the theme in my in my opinion the story have five themes only three are important and two are supplementary i'm gonna describe them first poor struggle second imagination of a child third curiosity four deduction and five irony the poor struggle is um, constantly evident between aunt and nicholas if you want to talk about symbolism you can compare it with development and orthodox society science and religion and generation gaps between children and parents there are various evidence of this poor struggle through the story imagination of a child is also very evident the three chief examples are frog in a milk bowl the tail in the tapestry and the evil one it is very easy to elaborate on this theme curiosity is what drive the whole story very obvious and so is deduction nicholas has, be, has a keen sense of deduction he can predict and deduce and deduce the aunt's reaction to various things we can consider that his attempt to put frog in the milk was to drive cousin cousins away and the attempt to the attempt to get into the garden was a way to keep the aunt away this will then this will then give him an opportunity to explore the lot the lumber room now that he's smart this is also something that helped him gain readers affection irony can be seen when the cousin who were supposed to enjoy did not enjoy and nicholas enjoy is in his push punishment a greater irony is when adults who are supposed to act mature take part in petty matters like what the aunt did with nicholas and children who are supposed to be immature portray interest in things of detail moreover his sense of planning is also a trait usually shown by adults let's go to the settings the short story The Lumber Room by Saki was published in 1914 and it's believed it was inspired by the author childhood when he was young. His mother died and he was sent to live with a grandmother and strict aunt who deeply influenced his upbringing. Time setting The time setting of the short story is not mentioned but we can assume the event take place either in 1914 or around the 1870s. Uh, the physical setting present the action uh, taking place in a bow in a town. 
in the house owned by Nicholas Hunt. The place called Jaboru is mentioned but it is not a real location. When it comes to the social setting, the story perfectly depicts the gap between generations but also the effect of a tyrannical upbringing first of all. There is an evident gap between Nicholas and his aunt in what their view on life are concerned. Nicholas is fed up with his aunt's cruel way of raising children. While the aunt does not show affection toward her nieces and nephews, what is more, she seems to enjoy tormenting them and making them suffer through punishment. What is the significance of the gooseberry garden in Saki's story, The Lumber Room? The, the significance of the gooseberry garden in Saki's short story, The Lumber Room, is in what that garden represents. Nicholas, an apparently precious child prone to some degree of mis mischievous behavior, is being raised by a distant relative, spe spe specifically his cousin, aunt who fancy herself Nicholas Hunt as well. The story begins with one of Nicholas' prank. He places a frog from the garden in his bowl of milk and bread, leading to his aunt's condemnation, condemn, condemnation of his behavior. His penalty, Saki's narrator state, will be his inability to accompany his cousin and his younger brother and hastily arranged trip to the beach. The narrator explains how this form of punishment fits into the aunt's pattern of conjuring playful outing and other treat to wield leverage over whichever child has seen. It was her habit whenever one of the children fell from grace to improve something of a festival nature from which the offender would be rigorously debarred if all the children seen collectively they were suddenly informed of a circus in a neighboring town, a circus of unrivaled merit and uncoated elephant to which but for their depravity they would have been taken that very day. This is where the gooseberry garden become important. In addition to banning Nicholas from the trip to the beach, the aunt further forbids him from entering the garden. The significance of the garden therefore lies with its symbolism. The garden represents yet another tool with which to ostensibly gain leverage over one of the children. The irony in Saki's story, however, is that Nicholas' attention is drawn not to the gooseberry garden but to the locked lumber room, the inside of which has been a mystery to the young boy. As the aunt pulled the entrance to the garden, anticipating catching Nicholas attempting, attempting to defy her orders, the boy instead gained access to the lumber room and discovered its secret. What is the most important thing in the lumber room that Nicholas entered in Saki's story? The lumber room. The last line of Saki's short story, The Lumber Room, provides the reader with the answer to this question. It was just possible. Nicholas considered that the huntsman would escape with his wounds while the wolf feasted on the stricken stag. Clearly, the tapestry which acts as a fire screen greatly delight the imagination of the ingenious pranker Nicholas who steal into the lumber room and find wonderful things. First and foremost, there was a piece of framed tapestry. This tapestry which depicts a stag shot to or at close range by a hunter with his dog equipped with a mere bow and arrow who in another part of the design appears to be in arms way as a pack of angry wolves look on while he stand with a mare to arrow left greatly intrigue nicholas 
and after the success of his clever prank of pretending to not recognize his aunt and thus be able to leave her in the water tank. The imaginative Nicola feels more confident of the future, surmising that like the hunter he too may eschew the arm of the predatory, predatory aunt who is symbolized by the wolf and live and live and life to use his arrow like wit in order to strike his victim down by outwitting her in her strike an often foolish pronouncement and unreasonable punishment how does nicolas spend his time while he's in the lumber room in saki's story the lumber room in the lumber room by saki nicolas implements his plan to enter the forbidden room while his aunt searches for him in the gooseberry garden being just a little boy nicolas practiced using a key for days before he had the opportunity to use the real one to enter the lumber room while he was in the lumber room nicolas was treated to a variety of items that brought him great delight and intrigue one of the first thing he did was to examine the scene depicted on a piece of tapestry to the little boy the scene of hunt came to life as he imagined the sight and sound associated with the thunder aiming the bow and arrow at a stag as dog John in the hunt but the boy could see what the hunter could not there were wolves descending on the man and dog which left Nicholas wondering how the story would unfold first and foremost there was a piece of frame tapestry that was evidently meant to be a fair screen to Nicolas. It was a living, roughing story. He sat down on a roll of ad- ad- Indian hanging, glowing in wonderful color beneath a layer of dust and took in all the detail of tapestry picture. The tapestry was not the only project of delight in the room. There were but covered uh, lamps, painting, piece of china, condensing, and variety of books. In addition, there was a plain bond book, which Nicola thought would not hold any interest for him. But when he opened it, it was filled with pictures of exotic birds the likes of which he had never seen. Less promising in appearance was a large square book with plain black covers. Nicholas peeped into it and behold it was full of color pictures of birds. Nicholas spent his time in the lumber room enraptured by its content of curiosities. In the short story, The Lumber Room, what is Nicolas doing in the lumber room? In the lumber room, Nicolas delightfully unleashed his imagination as he examined the treasure stored away in this dirty room. In this dusty room, Nicolas escaped from his prosaic and supercilious haunt by sequestering himself in the forbidden lumber room after assuring his safety by cleverly assuming an expression of considerable obstinacy he does this in order to make the aunt believe that he truly desires to enter the gooseberry garden and will make effort to do so with this subterfuge, Nicola ensured that his aunt will occupy herself in self-imposed century duty for the greater part of the afternoon, and he can safely enjoy himself elsewhere. Once in the lumber room, Nicola indulged in flight of fancy as he happily gazed at all wonderful things, tearing among them a quaint object of interest and delight that absorbed his attention 
firstly condylar stick that are twisted into the shape of snake from an exotic exotic world an old-fashioned teapot shaped like a china dog whose beak is the poor spot thirdly a sandalwood box containing small delightful brass figure of brahma bulls peacock and mischievous dwarf like demons fourthly a large book filled with pictures of exotic and resplendent birds such as wood pigeon iron bustards toucans scarlet it bees, golden pheasants and many others but the object that truly arrests nicola attention is a large tapestry which depict a hunter who has shot a stag with an arrow to him it is a living briefing story in which he becomes the, the narrator looking at the scene of the deer impaled with the hunter arrow and the two dogs spring forward having remained at point while the thunder shot nicholas engaged his imagination as he wonders if the hunter was but two arrows left and the dogs will be able to hold off the four wolves who are stealing upon them nicholas sat for many golden minutes revolving the possibility of the sea he was inclined to think that there were more than four wolves and that the man and his dog were in a tight corner His exciting reveries about the deer and the picture books bird are unfortunately cut short by the shrill vociferation and his appointed aunt voice calling his name from the forbidden gooseberry garden nicola returns the bird books to its place and leaves the room locking it and replacing the key where it had long rested what is the irony of the short story the lumber room i think that the irony of this story is that the child who was to be punished with nicholas of course had the best day the most fun meanwhile the children who were supposed to be having the fun did not so nicholas ended up being reward for his bad deeds the theme of the story i think is the idea that adult one of the theme of the of the story is also the idea that adults are not always very intelligent when dealing with children nicholas Holmes tell him that there can possibly be a frog in his food when there actually is one she tell him she knows is in is in the gooseberry garden when it isn't she tells him there is no strawberry jam when really there was some so the story show adult being too certain and not believing the kids and it shows adult trying too hard to impose discipline and it show adult telling falsehood to try to control the children all of this together point out that adult when they try to have too much control and when they do not take their children seriously why is nicholas in disgrace in the lumber room by saki in the lumber room by saki nicholas is in disgrace for a number of reasons the most obvious reason seems to be that the, he refused to eat his breakfast because there is a frog in it nicholas was not to be of the party he was in disgrace only that morning he had refused to eat his wholesome bread and milk on the seemingly frivolous ground that there was a frog in it there is an underlining cause for nicholas disgrace the adult who were supposedly older and wiser try to assure him it was impossible for a frog to be in his milk but he knew better and proved them wrong this was an affront to the adult intellect the male child out outsmarted them as he described the animal in great detail and turned out to be telling the truth it must be noted that nicholas put along there himself 
so there was really no question of whether it was possible all to have a frog in one breakfast the adult especially the aunt found his this action infuriating